Welcome back to Northwest City Politics in the Northwest Juanita. We're so glad that you're joining us again this evening. We're always happy there are people like you out there, people that are interested in what's happening in our cities. It's important for good government that there be a good flow of information back and forth between city councils and mayors and residents and city staff, so we're glad that you're interested. Now, if you haven't watched our program before, each week we'll have someone on from one of the nine CCX of cities, probably a mayor or city council or active citizen, that will help bring us up to date on what's happening in your city and what's going to be happening. And we encourage you, if it's your city that night, be sure to take down their email and phone number. So if there's some issues that really concern you, do take time and be in contact with your mayors and city council people. Now, tonight, we're very happy to have a return guest, <laughs> Mayor Kathy Hemkin from New Hope. We've had you on several times yes, over the thank years. You. Right, so we're glad to have you back again and, and update everyone out there on what's happening in New Hope and what they should be watching out yep. for. Now, I'll have you start by introducing yourself out to our wider audience. Tell them a little bit about yourself and your time in New Hope. Well, I've been in New Hope for 42 years. I was on the Planning Commission for 11 years and chaired it and just thought it was a nice transition to run for public office. The mayor's job came up and, and I ran and here I am. Mm -hmm. So I've been the mayor for 10 years, love the job, and I would just continue on with keeping doing what mm -hmm. we're doing. We're making great progress. Yeah, you've had a lot, seen a lot of changes in the cities over time. We have. Actually, in the 10 years I've been mayor, we've added $191 million Ooh, to that's our good. tax base. That's I think that's good. amazing. That, that shows that you're doing something right in what people are looking for, helping to lower the overall taxes mm -hmm. of residents, right? Well, that's staff that's doing yeah. most of the work, by right. the way. Yeah. Well, you've got a lot of people working for you and for the residents, right? Yes, we do. Okay, we talked about several issues ahead of time, and I thought we'd talk again about scattered site housing, because a lot of people out there might see the term in the newspaper and not really know what, what it is. So I'm going to ask if you can give us a little background on how long this has been going on and describe the process of it. Well, New Hope is, is over 50 years old, and a right. lot of those houses were born in were born, were built in like 53, 54. Right. The smaller two bedroom, little littler houses. Well, we need, knew we needed to do something, but we weren't sure what to do. Mm -hmm. And in, in 2014, we hired a young man to come into our community development department. Ah. And he had worked in that area before. Uh -huh. And what he did is he started to scout around the neighborhoods to find those houses that appeared to be empty. Okay. So that uh, mom and dad had lived there since 53. They right. had either passed away or moved, and this house is sitting empty. And he would approach the owners of that house, uh -huh. which are usually the children, right. and asked if they'd want to sell. In a lot of the cases, they did. Uh -huh. And so then we would buy the house. Um, if it was in bad shape or it needed to come down because the basement of the foundation wasn't right. good, we would tear the house down, uh, sell the land to a developer, uh -huh. and they would build a, a nice new house and we would sell it to a, a nice new family. Uh, one of the houses that we bought uh, was pretty well built, but it just needed some renovation. So of the 20 that we've bought and sold since 2014, just one of them was a, a, a redevelopment. Uh -huh. So we just fixed it up and sold it. We do have one more in the works right now that we think we're going to just be able uh -huh. to fix and sell. The whole idea is to uh, remove some of these older blighted houses put up new houses, it really increases our tax base. Oh, right. Because these houses, we're buying them for 150000 and they're building $350,000 homes. That increases the tax base a lot. So we, we will continue to do that. We're doing it at a slow process. It's really interesting how we come across the houses. Yeah, I was just thinking some of, of that. Some of them, um, in, we put up a sign. Okay. And in some of the cases, the neighbors will come and say, I'd like to sell my house too. Ah. And so we're getting some from the neighbors. Uh -huh. Some of the neighbors are calling us and telling us there's an empty house uh -huh. next door to us that isn't being kept up. Would you come and look at it? Right. And some of it is just uh, the council people and I running around the city. We'll notice a house yeah. that is a good candidate. And then we just turn the name and uh, the number over to the 
the community development guy, uh -huh. and he goes and looks at it. So slowly we're doing this. We want to do it slowly so that we're doing it right. Right. And it seems to be working very, very well. The houses sell pretty quickly. Uh -huh. Yeah, because it's been a, a market where people are having trouble finding something to mm -hmm. buy. Yeah, and these are these are really nice. Actually, we toured a house just this morning, uh -huh. and it's, it's just absolutely beautiful. So we're happy with it. And, and the the factors that go into buy, to which ones you choose are sorted out by the community development department. Well, it is, and what they do is um, the the price, of course, okay, is important. If they're trying to sell that house at the uh, market value, okay, when the house is not uh, in that kind of condition, right. those are the ones we'll we'll look seriously at things that you don't hardly see, like is the basement crumbling? Uh -huh. Are the floors warped? Is there okay. mold? Is there a leakage in the house? Those are the kinds that would take too much money oh, to fix. Right. It's, it's really better just to tear them down uh -huh. and, and start over. And so th those are the ones we're, we're doing. We're not uh, particular in what area. Okay. We think when there's a, a blighted house, it's a blighted house. We can't go in and just, we don't have eminent domain. No. We can't just go in and say we're going to buy your house. Mm -hmm. It has to be on the market or they have to be willing to sell okay. it to us. So we're looking for houses that aren't necessarily at the market value, uh -huh. that they're looking to get rid of that house and we're looking to buy it. So that's something people can kind of be aware of in their neighborhood if some house is reaching that stage. They can certainly call City Hall uh -huh. and, and ask for community development. Okay. The gentleman's name is Aaron, and he will um, then talk to them. He'll go out and look at the house. If it seems like a, a logical thing to do, um, then we'll buy it. And so the, this program kind of helps neighborhoods improve, right? Oh, it does. You know that when one house kind of falls in disrepair, very often the neighboring houses will kind of start not taking uh -huh. as good a care. When you put up a brand new house, the neighborhood just seems to spruce uh -huh. up and everybody starts to take care of the houses a little better. So we think it's really uh, taking New Hope uh, that one step beyond and uh -huh. making it a, a cleaner, nicer neighborhood area to be in. So it is a measure of redevelopment, right? It is. It is. Now some of the homes are on big enough lots that you've put two homes in, well, in, in replacing one when it's enough space. In 1953 when they were building some of these, of course they were built on farmland because that's what New Hope was. And um, at that time these people were living on these big farms so they took a big chunk of land uh -huh. to put their house on it. And in, in some cases they put the house right in the middle of the the, what we would think were double lots. So those are really popular mm -hmm. with us because then we can buy the house, tear it down, do a lot split and build two houses there. We're not building duplexes, what we're building right. is single family homes. We do have a covenant in there that says the people buying the home sh have to live there. I uh -huh. mean it can't be a speculator, uh -huh. uh, it can't be a rental, it has to be homeowner. Okay, let's move along and talk a little bit about development in New Hope. There's been a lot of it over the years. And right now, uh, there's a project that Alatus is doing in a, building a luxury apartment. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about the history of it. Well, maybe first where it's going up, because people on, are driving on... It's on Bass Lake Road, right, right next to the golf course, and it's big. It's yeah. really big. Right. In 2008, um, I wasn't the, the mayor then, but we bought five apartment complexes right. that were really in, in very despicable oh, condition. Right. Tore those down, thought we had a developer at that time. Uh, we did not, that fell through, and the land sat there. Uh, one of the things that we knew, we knew what we wanted, we just was, weren't able to find uh -huh. it at the moment. So one day, uh, Bob Lux, who owns Atlantis, which is a development company, right. came to us and proposed this 183 four-story building. Uh, it's high-end luxury apartments. Uh -huh. We don't have rental apartments in that category. No, we not have at some, all. We have some co-ops. Uh, we have owner-occupied owner uh -huh. for sale, but we don't have any rental property right. in that. So they started building this a uh, couple years ago. They should be finished the... I believe the move-in date is the 2nd of January, ah. so they're, they're moving right along with it. Uh, they have their rental office in the golf course, ah. and that's kind of a, a nice little deal. 
they were going to put a trailer up uh -huh. to have their, their, le their leasing office and they couldn't put it on the property because it's a construction zone. Oh, sure. So they wanted to put it in the parking lot of, of the New Hope Golf Course. Well, that parking lot gets pretty full. Right. And we really didn't want it there, so we offered them to have their office inside the clubhouse. Uh -huh. And in exchange for that, they gave us a rather large sum of money so that we're going to put a new deck on the back oh. side of the golf course. Oh, that's a nice exchange. They're happy as larks <laughs> to be in there, and we're right. happy that they're there. Right. And now that winter's coming in, we're not using that. So that's where the leasing office is. It's open, um, I think, Tuesday to Saturday, okay. 10 to 5 or 6. And then on Sundays, they're having open houses. So if people want to lease or at least see what's going, right. two things. It's called Ironwood. Okay. And so they can go online and look at Ironwood. They can look at the floor plans. Uh, they can also look at the, the cost of the rentals if they need to see right. that. And if they want to see the inside on Sundays, uh, they give tours. Oh, okay. So they just need to call. There's a phone number there. Okay. They just need to call and, and ask for a tour. I understand that the leasing is going very well. Okay. Um, I don't know if they're going to be full by the 2nd of January, but they seem to be, be leasing out quite well. So they're, they're pleased with the progress, right? We're, they're pleased and we are uh -huh. very pleased because now, if you imagine five despicable buildings, oh, and then right. we owned that it. That were sinking into the ground. <laughs> yes, they were. And then after we bought it, it, it became a non-taxable property because right. right. we owned it. Well, now we've got 183 units with like a $45 million project sitting on it. Again, that add to that $191 million. It, that's a big tax base. Oh, it is. Some of this was done with, with TIF, a tax increment right. financing, which means that We'll still collect taxes from this mm -hmm. building, except the difference between nothing, because we owned right. it, and the taxes that they're paying will go back into our TIF district right. that we can use for another project. So the money is actually coming back to the city. Mm -hmm. they, they don't get free money. Right. They're, they're giving right. us, they're paying back the money, but it's going into a special little, pro mm -hmm. uh, little pot for more development. So what is it about the apartments that make them luxury apartments? Well, there's a lot of amenities inside. Okay. There's a there's actually a grocery store inside. Oh. And there's a couple big party rooms uh -huh. and a pool and uh, exercise rooms. There's a, a room where they can drop off packages. It seems like everybody's getting things from Amazon. Right, right. Now they'll just drop them off and you'll use your key fob to get into the room uh -huh. to retrieve your packages. Uh, they can either have your medicines delivered and uh -huh. put in the refrigerator or the freezer. And again, they're safe because you right. have to use your fob to get them out right. of there. Um, a lot of things like that. It's just going to be a very nice addition to, to the city. And, and give an, another option for people as they're moving through their life cycle and well, what, what they might what want. What they were finding, I asked them about well, who's going to live here. Uh -huh. And what they said is there's an awful lot of people in New Hope that want to stay in New Hope, but they no longer want to live in a house. Right. But they, and they don't want to own. And so this is just another option for them. There's also a lot of millennials moving into the city. Oh, right. Because we are having more job opportunities, mm -hmm. and these younger people are moving in. They don't expect there to be many children in this okay. building. But they're, it isn't that they're not allowed. They yeah. just don't expect them to right. be there. But I do believe they're pet friendly. Ah. So they're allowing people oh. to, to come in with pets. So. Oh. Moving on, and we'll talk a little bit about parks, because that's an important part of all our cities. It's kind of the an amenity that brings people to choose to live there, right? Absolutely. Everybody in New Hope lives within six blocks of a park. Aha. And that, that was by design. Right. Some of these parks are bigger. Some of them are, are little corner parks, but it's still a park. Uh -huh. And we wanted people to be able to walk to those parks. And now we're having a trail system where they can take their bikes and go from park to park if, ah. they, if they so want. And the newest thing, is because we're getting moving into winter now, is the skating rinks. How many skating rinks does New Hope have this winter? Because you used to have many in almost all the parks. And then as the, the taxes versus what well, the amenities other thing, you have, you have to weigh in balance. The other thing that happens is the kids grew up. Oh, right. And, and they left. Yeah. <laughs> and now we're getting more little kids in. But we actually just have four, uh, four parks that are open now. A civic With skating center, rinks. Skating right? rinks. So there's Liberty, uh, Civic Center, 
a holiday, and you might have to help me with the fourth one. Ah, uh, let me see what have I got. Oh, I don't know if I jotted that down. Oh, I know the fourth one, Alliance. Ah, right, right, So these right. skating rinks, rinks will open on 12-15, okay. weather permitting. This is a long process. Okay. They haven't, uh, they're preparing the rinks now, but they haven't been spraying them much with mm -hmm. ice because it's supposed to get warm over Thanksgiving oh, weekend. Oh, right, right. But they will start spraying them, and it's, it's numerous, numerous coats to get these skating rinks ready to go. Uh, the warming houses will also be open at those four, uh, those four parks. Now, if you don't like the cold weather, mm -hmm. you can always skate with Santa right, right. indoors, and that's on the 14th of December, that's uh -huh. 6.30 to 8. Um, there's open skating on Friday evenings and late Sunday afternoons at our ice arena all the time. Okay. But the Skate with the Santa, um, just come in with your skates, uh, there's a small fee, bring a, uh -huh. a can of goods going to the food shelf and come skate with Santa. Oh, that sounds like fun. I am not skating with Santa. I do not, <laughs> I'm not very good at ice skating. I'm not very coordinated. Yeah, I don't know if I could do very well no. anymore. Now, the, I just wanted to go back on to the skating rinks because there's, there's supervision there and there's warming houses there. During what hours? Uh, the skating Roughly. rinks, I think, are open first thing in the morning. Okay. So like 9, 10 o'clock. Uh -huh. And they're open till I think, 9 or 10 at mm -hmm. night. The lights come on and uh, they really want the kids home oh, where they right, belong. Right. The ice arena is open about the same hours, mm -hmm. too. You can always call City Hall and ask the question. Oh, sure, if, if people are wondering. Yep. But it, the four rinks that are available are scattered throughout the city. So Yes, they are. So everybody's close to a rink. Right. They might not be in their neighborhood yeah. or in their backyard like they used to be. And then it th doesn't fit with the ice rinks, but I thought we'd touch on the fact that last year the holiday train stopped in New Hope and there was problems this year. So I thought yeah. we could explain to people um, what, what what's happened? happening. So the holiday train came to us again and said, we want to come to your city, but we want to come on Tuesday and we want to come at three in the afternoon. Mm. The problem with that is the kids are just getting out of school. Uh -huh. So to close 49th Avenue where the train would come means the school buses couldn't oh, go through the, yeah. to get those kids home. The parents weren't home yet from work. There's a problem getting the kids right. to the train without right. that. Um, Besides that, we used a lot of the businesses around there to park our cars. Oh, yeah. And so the businesses are still doing business. Oh, yeah. So you we wouldn't. couldn't get the parking yeah. lots. Uh, there were other events going on at the, the ice arena. It just didn't make sense this year yeah. to do that. I understand that the railroad still gave a, a rather nice check to the food group. Oh, that's So good. they still got their, the income that they uh -huh. got from the trains. Right. We just won't have it. The first stop will actually be 5 o'clock in Golden Valley. Uh -huh. So if they really want to see, by that time it'll be dark. Uh -huh. So they could go oh, to Golden Valley and, right. and see it there. But um, we, we haven't closed the door on the train. We'd like to have uh -huh. them come back. But we do, we do realize that it has to be a time that's convenient. Because oh, yeah. it's a lot of work for city staff. Definitely. And some amount of cost to have this train come through. It's a wonderful amenity, but we need people there. Right. And this was not the best time. I, I must tell you, though, um, from 16 to 17, the house values, the market value of people's houses went up uh, 10.5%. Ah, that's pretty good. So when your value of your house goes up, obviously, right. your taxes right. go up. Right. So we've been trying to uh, lure businesses in because business pays a higher income tax right. Right. than, uh, or a property tax than, than residents do. So we've been trying to bring in businesses. Some have jobs, some don't, but uh, just having the business there, we're getting a higher, mm -hmm. higher amount of taxes right. from them. We know that it costs a lot of money to run a city. Oh, it does. And we know that some of the amenities we have in the city are important to us. That's why people move here. Right. We can't have them all, but we do know the ones that we do mm -hmm. have, we want to take good care of and, and fix them when we can. And then uh, I wanted to be sure to have you mention the fact that there will be swimming available in, because of the connection with Crystal. Uh, we share a, a pool pass right. with Crystal, right. so they can always go to Crystal to, uh -huh. to swim. Uh, about the taxes, we're going to have a budget meeting on the 3rd of right. December that's open to the public like all of our, mm -hmm. our uh, meetings are. They can also go online, their budget's online, they can look at it there if they want to. Right. 
Um, we, we as a city believe in open government. We believe that it's, it's their money, my right. money, your money. Right. It's the citizens' money. We want them to have all the access we could. Just recently there was a fraud case in Plymouth uh -huh. that was uh, pretty well publicized. We have a lot of checks and balances ah. in our system so that that could not happen. Right. And we want to make sure that could not happen. And that's one of the reasons we put everything online so that people can see what's going on. Right. There's no secrets at all. And it's important for citizens to, to come to these meetings because then they'll gather information, but they'll also be able to give you information, right? Yep. They can always call me at home, uh -huh. always. Well, not always. Before 7 o'clock a.m. <laughs> or after 10, I'm pretty crabby. Right. So I'm not going to answer the phone. <laughs> but any other time, um, they can call and leave a message. I will always call them back. Um, if someone's got something to say to me, I want to hear it. Mm -hmm. I don't answer a lot of emails because I think sometimes things get a little convoluted oh, with yeah. an email. Yeah. I would much rather talk to my citizens than to simply uh, send them a text right. or an email. So they're free to call anytime they want. Now, the city budget has a lot of work before it gets to the December point, because you actually start on the budget early in the year, right? Oh, like February. Right. Because we go over each department, the city manager with the uh -huh. city directors, uh, he goes over the budget with with that department, every one of them line by line. Do you really need this? Do you need more money? Right. Uh, where are we on that? And then when all that happens, then he starts putting them together and saying, you, you're spending too much, you're not spending uh, as much as we had budgeted, we might have to take some from that. We don't have anybody like a business that um, says, well, it's getting to be the end of the year, we better hurry up and spend that. <laughs> we don't have that. We run a very tight budget, mm -hmm. and we know we do, and we do that purposely. There are things you have to do and money you have to spend. Oh, right. It's not the city's money, it's our money. Right. And we want to make sure we're spending that wisely. Well, and I think sometimes people need to balance out the taxes versus the services that they get through the city. Mm-hmm. They always need to balance that out. Right. And if we have something that isn't utilized like it should be, well, the ice arena, the ice rinks were uh -huh. a real good case in point. Oh, right. Some right. of those ice rinks weren't utilized as much mm -hmm. as they they could have been, and to save money, we cut that down to four, making sure that the four were spread across the mm -hmm. city that you could get to one of those four uh, without a lot of effort. Right. I have to tell you one other thing about the the taxes. The city council, along with everybody else at the city, got a three percent increase. Okay. And when you're making six bucks an hour, three percent of six bucks an hour is eighteen cents. <laughs> right. I want to make sure that people understand <laughs> that three percent isn't a, a fifty dollar right, raise. Right, right. It's eighteen cents right. an hour, and they they need they need to know that. Right, right. But we did vote ourselves a raise. We thought we okay. were worth the eighteen cents. Sounds good. Well, most of us anyway. <laughs> right. <laughs> Okay, I wanted to back up a little bit on the taxes because I wanted you to maybe give some um, examples of where you made changes. You gave a few, but to let people know that everything doesn't just come rolling through. The city council reviews oh, it all carefully. It, they do, they do. We, uh, we have a joint fire department okay. with Crystal. We know that we have to... Uh, every now and then you have to replace the fire trucks because the time to find out a fire truck doesn't work properly is not the time when you've got a fire. Oh, right, right. And so they, they have a lifespan and we know because of that we have to put a certain amount of money into a fund for replacement of those vehicles uh -huh. and, and we're doing that. We look at that every year. Does that make sense to put that in? Right. Um, each building of the fire station is uh, kept up by the city okay. that has that building. We, uh, we had a, um, something in the fire budget that said we were going to put so much money each year for a new roof for the fire station. Well, we bought the new roof for the fire station, so therefore we took that out of the budget this year because we've got a brand new roof. Mm -hmm. Now what they'll do is evaluate the lifespan of that roof uh -huh. divided by 10 years. Okay whatever the lifespan is, right. and that's how much we will put in. Ah. So we do that with, with just about everything. The parks that we 
repair. We have a, a list of those parts. Right. And there's a standard number. This is how much money it's going to cost to do a park. Uh -huh. But when it comes time to look at that park, if it happens to be a tiny little park that we're not doing a lot of equipment, they're not going to get the same amount of money that a big park oh, would sure. get. So we would reduce the budget yeah. at that point. So we look at everything and make sure that it makes sense. When we replaced our vehicles, um, when, when things were short of money, we didn't get this LGA, we said, you know, we're going to fix those vehicles, you're going to run them another couple of years, we're not putting that money into mm -hmm. the what's called central garage, right. where right. anything on wheels gets bought out of there. So we put money into that fund every year, but we also look at where are the vehicles. Did we just buy a front uh -huh. end loader? If we did, what's the lifespan, and that's how much, right. if it's more or less, we adjust it accordingly. Uh -huh. So when I say they go over the budget line by line, they do, line by right. line. And they have to justify why are you spending that? What are you spending on? Do you really need that much? Let me see the, uh -huh. let me see the bill. Right. Otherwise, they don't get the money. <laughs> well, and it, take, it takes a lot of people keeping their eyes on that, right? It does. We, uh, in that case, we went out to get a consultant firm called AEM. Uh -huh. And we did that because AEM is a big accounting firm and they understand budgets, they understand right. how to do this. They came in and they very carefully walked our city manager through the steps of this. We had a budget that would just roll the same budget over right. and over and over and not necessarily what you should be doing. Right. So when AEM came in, they sat down for almost a year with our city manager and said, okay, it's February, you call in this department. Right. Here's March, you call in that department. So department by department, they showed them how to do that and then showed them how they were putting it all together. Mm -hmm. So when we go to an outside firm, we don't have to pay benefits. Uh -huh. So even though they're expensive to hire, right. it's cheaper than having a, a finance manager right. and a finance director and a couple finance people. We have a, one person that comes in couple days a week right. that does this except at budget time she comes in a little more often. Right. She's got a whole firm behind her that that supports what she's doing so that firm also looks at, that's AEM, they also look at that. So we know we're doing it right, we right. know we're doing we're doing it in a careful manner. We've also told Crystal about this and the fire department and they have also hired AEM. Ah. So this is a good firm with a good reputation and they're actually saving us money and we're doing it. Well, and I think too, what I remember is that they put the budget in a much more understandable form so yes. that people can look at it and actually figure things out. Yes, yes. And uh, they do that so that not only the, the council can look at it, because we're not accountants, right. well, most of us aren't, but that you or anybody else out there could look at it and understand what right. it is. And they show, they show the history. Well, I want to thank you so well, much thank you, for Anita sharing your thoughts and ideas and what's happening in New Hope and what people should be aware of. We'll encourage people, be sure if any of these issues are ones that are of concern to you, be in contact with Mayor Hempton or with your council members and let them know what you're thinking. And we encourage you to tune in next week for part two on New Hope's issues. Bye.